This was my struggle in real time when it comes to installing a playfield on my homemade rotisserie. Now, was it cheap to make? Sorta. Did it do what I needed it to do? Sorta. Now, was it easy to work with? Not really. After this segment was shown in one of my recent videos, I was contacted by Pindock Rotisseries. I uh, guess they really felt my struggle in this section. I was pretty content with what I had made. I mean, why bother with the fancy ones, right? Well, that was until I got my hands on one. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to assemble and use the entire Pindock Rotisserie combo. But exactly what is the Pindock Rotisserie? What's up guys and welcome back to my channel where I talk and do everything pinball. So if that sounds interesting to you, then hit that subscribe button down below. Now the chances are if you're watching this video, then you're more than likely in the market for a pinball play field rotisserie. And by the end of the video, I would hope that I have given you all the info that you need in order to make up your mind. And if you're watching this video in order to know how to put this whole pin dock rotisserie together, I hope to satiate that need as well. Now let's start with the elephant in the room. Do you need a pinball play field rotisserie? No. No, you don't. And that's something that all pinball play field rotisserie dealers or sellers rather will not like to hear me say but the fact of the matter is you don't need one but that's why you tune into my channel is because you don't want to hear me shill shit you want to hear what i think now for the first few years in this hobby me working on my games i did not have a pinball play field rotisserie and that's why i know and state that you don't need one it's because i've been there I've done all the work without one, and now I do work utilizing one. So for the first few years, I did not use one. And then I felt, you know what, let me have a rotisserie. You know, maybe there's some benefits to it. And spoiler alert for you guys out there, there are major benefits to utilizing a playfield rotisserie. Now, even at the time, there were rotisseries on the market to purchase, but me being the cheap person I am, I decided to build my own, utilizing a buddy of mine's homemade version as a template. Now, it has done me well over the last few years. I've utilized it for many play fields to do all types of restorations or work. But ignorance is bliss. Sure, my homemade version allowed me to do what I couldn't do before without one, but there were still quite a few limitations. Not to mention, it really wasn't built with the best materials. Enter the Pendock Rotisserie. Crafted with high quality and heavy materials. And I'm not kidding, I weighed the boxes upon receiving them and you're looking at about 40 pounds worth of metal. Okay, so the quality materials is nice, Carrie, but uh, what is this gonna cost me? Okay, let's rip off this band-aid. When it comes to the rotisserie by itself, there are three tier models, the Pro, Premium, and limited edition. Now it calls them limited edition or LE rather, but I don't know if that would be the correct term for it because there is no limits to how many can be purchased. But a rose by any other name still smells just as sweet. Now when it comes to functionality and quality, the tiers do not matter. If you get the cheaper pro model, you're still going to get the high quality, great materials, and it's going to do everything that the premium and LE models do but the higher tier models are gonna gain you ease of use as well as a sweeter look. And the same goes for the two options for the sidekick and the sliders. There are two tiers for those being premium and limited edition. And the only difference is the powder coating. 
If you choose the limited edition with powder coating, you have a nice selection of colors to choose from. The model that I will be unboxing and putting together is the LE Blue. So going back to my initial statement slash question, do you need a pinball plate build rotisserie? No, the answer remains the same. But the reasoning behind owning one also remains the same. And that is, it makes the job a hell of a lot easier. instructions on here on how to assemble this me personally I'm much more of a visual person so having just text alone on explaining how to go about putting this together is not enough for me and I know there's a bunch of you out there that are the same so we are going to be putting this together uh, without using the instructions. That is the plan. Of course, that could change if I really just don't know what I'm supposed to do. But I have a pretty good idea on how this is supposed to be put together. And if at any moment I feel like I do not know what I'm supposed to do, I will by all means look at the instructions. All right, so this is obviously gonna go, we're gonna put this together, this end right here, and this end right here. Now this is obviously gonna have to go over here because the plate field sits on that. So that one's gonna go right there, this one's gonna go right here. Now there's already a slide bar in here okay so this is should go already into place if I got it all the way in there I feel like that needs to go a little further in there this one. There we go. Alright, so that goes in there like that. This one, that goes in there like that. Alright. I have got these bars flush to the table. Like that. And these should do the same on this end over here. Flush to the table. Get this one out of this one. flush to the table on that one as well. So, now we need to connect both ends like so. pretty much connecting them to where I'll be able to distance them correctly at a certain point in time. Get 
tighten those up. Now you've got one solid piece. And I'm not kidding when I say solid. The only thing shaking is my table. Otherwise, that's on there. Now these, let's figure out how these get, oh, okay. I've already figured it out. Let's take this off. And these are both the same, so there's no difference on that. And do these screw into place? Or do they just slide right on in? Looks like they screw into place. I'm getting deeper and deeper into the bar. There we go. One more turn out of it out there that's pretty darn flush then I'll put the remaining nut that was originally on there to keep it tightened in place and we'll do rinse and repeat with this end take the nut off of that and we'll we can match it with this side where the turn knob is on the same, which I think I'm gonna do actually. So, yeah, this one seemed to go in a lot easier. I think the easiness of it will greatly depend on the powder coating, on whether or not it's in the threads. Let's probably get one more turn out of that. There we go, nice and flush. Put that nut on there. And then these. Should buckle down in place. Like that. Mm -hmm. And this end over here. And buckle that down in place like that now guys that's it if you have just the base model rotisserie without the sidekick and we can loosen this knob up right here to determine how fast and easy we want to be able to turn this once I tighten this knob right here that buckles that end down to where it's either going to be solid in place, or just makes it to where it requires a little bit more effort to turn it. Goodness gracious. Yep. Loosen that up. Now, to put a plate build on here, you're going to want these to be level with the table or ground that you are utilizing. We are ready to go. Now, of course, before I go about mounting my plate build, there's going to be a couple of things that I'm going to need to do first. One, I need to measure exactly the distance between this L bracket right here and this L bracket right here on how the plate build is going to be able to slide into place. Now, if I've got a bare play field, it would be that simple. I'm going to be using, utilizing my Johnny Mnemonic that is already semi-assembled. So I've got objects on the back side of the play field. And depending on if there's anything mounting on the rear end, like towards the top up here, which there is, this is where the sidekick is going to come into play. So now we're going to assemble the sidekick and we'll put this to the side. Look how that just comes. Look at that. Solid. Like a rock. Loving that.
right, so I'm not going to lie, guys. I've already assembled the sidekick to figure out how to put this dang thing on. And I have now disassembled it. So now it's taken completely apart, even more so than it typically would be when you get it in the package. Now, I had to get out some uh, tools in order to do so. What you're going to need is a 9 16th. I've got this as well as a 9 16th and a ratchet but you're also going to need a size 19 for the bigger bigger ones now what you could do is completely assemble this thing and have somebody assist you which is highly recommended but chances are if you're like me you want to know how to do this by yourself if you can do it by yourself then you can easily do it with somebody assisting you so i'm going to show you how to do it by yourself if you want to assemble it with a friend or whatever, then so be it. So, starting out, we're going to take one of the bolts. You're going to have two of these. It's going to be cut off like that. This is the bolt that you're going to use to go into this portion right here. So, I would sit right here, and you can just raise it up. And then spin it around until it locks in place. That flat end that's been cut off is there for a reason, so that's able to rest in there and be nice and solid. So I've got that in there. That shouldn't go anywhere. Take your other bolt that is not cut off, and that's going to go down here through this way. If I can get make sure I get that on camera. But that one's going to go in here. All right, so let's start off by grabbing this portion right here. Get a good look at it. And... We're going to be putting this on here. First, let's get a washer in here. Then, we'll put this one in here. Another washer. And then, the bolt. Now, I'm basically just going to have it sitting in there for right now. Now, the bottom bolt is going to be going in down here at the bottom. And it should feed through. And it should feed through right there. So, well, once again. So down here, you want to put a washer on right there. Then you should be able to feed it through. Another washer. Another bolt. Once again, this is just loosely on here, so it's not going to go anywhere. And you're going to rinse and repeat on the other side. The Sidekick works on all Bally Williams System 11 and WPC playfields that use either the 8726 playfield holder bracket or the sliding mech like I have in this video. The Sidekick can also be used on Gottlieb Premier and Stern, but a half inch hole will need to be drilled in the existing playfield support brackets. When using the Sidekick with a pivot type play field holder, the tooted washer must be installed and tightened extremely tight. Alright, now this is where you're going to take this and these should line up with the four holes on both sides if you have these portions loose enough. So, since I've got this side done, I'm going to grab my bolt, let's do a washer, let's feed it through all the way on this side, do another bolt, and a nut, that's in place, let's go to the other side. Bolt and washer all the way over. Washer and a nut. All right. Now we pretty much have the structure in place. So we're just going to continue. Let's do the one all the way over to this side. Oh, put it in order. 
washer bolt, washer nut. All right, now all the hardware is in place. Now it comes down to just tightening everything up as it stands, so that way it's not gonna go anywhere. So I'm gonna use my 916, hold that in place, make sure I have that in the right direction. Tighten that up. That a little tighter, shall we? All right, that's nice and tight. So, now the ones on the end over here, this is where you're gonna need your number 19. All right, these should be locked in place so you shouldn't have to have a tool on the other side. So we're just gonna go ahead and get that locked down. That ain't going anywhere. Same goes for down here. That's nice and tight too. Get the other side. This is on there good. Honestly, the Sidekick is a great help and addition to this product, especially on stacked playfields that don't give you access to use clamps and hold the playfield to a bare rotisserie. Now, in comparison to not using the Sidekick, I feel that the Sidekick gives me an extra feeling of security. Depending on the clamps to hold up my playfield has always been a worry for me. So, in a nutshell, the Sidekick gives you complete playfield access with the added security of knowing the playfield is secure. Now, since we're using the Sidekick, we are not going to need this on one side. So, on one side, that's up to you. You need to remove this bolt by using a half inch socket. I believe after a certain amount of time, it should lift out of place. There we go. So keep that handy, you're gonna need that this portion right here so we'll put these pieces down right there and then this extra piece right here we can just set that to the side as well all right now before I go lifting this play field up and just throwing it on here I need to make sure it's going to fit so there's going to need to be adjustments made to make sure this is neither too long or too short of a gap in order for this to fit in. Now, it's not gonna be your standard length of a play field because we have this additional sidekick right here. So what I need to do is get out my measuring tape and measure from the bottom of the play field that will be resting on here, all the way up to, let's go ahead and do it to the middle of this bar right here. So I'm sitting at right at 48, so I need to extend out. So I'm going to loosen these up, and then I should be able to extend this out and this out.
right there at 51. So, once I know I'm good, then I can tighten these back down. Tighten that down. So both sides have been tightened down and one last final check. All right. Should be good now. Now every playfield varies in size and weight, so it is strongly recommended that you use two people when mounting this to the pin dock rotisserie. Now they recommend you take off these entirely. I'd say you can keep them on. One less thing to disassemble if you don't have to. Now the only thing is, on this version, you can't go turning it without any kind of support holding this in place. You can pick up some handy dandy little uh, clamps right here from Harbor Freight that you can put over the top, like so. I recommend you use the rubber mounts, that way there's no damage that can occur to your play field from pressure. Now, for some reason I can't find the other replicant of that, so I'm going to use a different one right here to show you that you can use it with multiple sizes. And we'll just go a little deeper on this one just to make sure we don't have any obstruction. There. So now with those in place, you can still do what you're wanting to do. Let's say we'll turn it to this side. And you can tighten that down. Just make sure that you've got these nice and secure for the play field doesn't go anywhere else. Now as great as the sidekick option is, that still leaves the bottom half of the play field depending on clamps to hold it to the rotisserie. I'm putting the slotters on while the play field is out of the cabinet, but ideally you would put these on right before removing it from the machine. It is also recommended to mount these once you have removed the playfield mounting and lifting brackets that I still have installed. That is why this is taking longer to install it. The factory brackets can easily be reinstalled once the playfield is back in the cabinet. I find the slider option very helpful for the same reasons I love the sidekick. It gives me the ability to fully access the playfield while giving me security. Now this is how I've got this side mounted. Now chances are this is not going to be recommended, but this is the way I'm doing it. It would probably be more recommended if I was to remove said brackets to give me more threads to screw on than I've currently got on here. I should be good to where it shouldn't come flying off or anything. But those are all buckled down, which gives me the ability to move this around and it not go anywhere. And there it is. This playfield rotisserie is fully installed. All you got to do is loosen up these two knobs, then you can swivel this any direction you feel good about. You want to work on it like this, then you just Tighten this side down, tighten your other side down, and this thing's good as your table is. And you can work on this side, but if you want to flip it completely over, loosen those up, rotate it over, tighten them back up, and continue working on it. Gives you the ability to look on both sides and work on it and whenever you're done loosen them up roll it back over tighten it back up and there you go
Now there you have it, the Pindock Rotisserie, the optional sidekick, and sliders. I'm very thankful for Pindock Rotisseries sending me their product so that way I may use it and give all of you the feedback on how I feel about it. To my fellow restorers out there, if you are in need of a quality rotisserie, I cannot recommend this one enough. Something else to note on this rotisserie is the fact that it's got a small footprint, meaning once you're done with your project, it can be easily disassembled and put back into the same box that it arrives in. Unlike my previous rotisserie that I built, this one can be stored away and not take up real estate, and then it can easily be brought out, reassembled for your next project. To purchase your very own Pindock Rotisserie, I will put links in the description down below. If you like what you've seen here, give me the thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button down there. Ding my dong. That way you can be notified of whenever I upload something for your viewing pleasure. And until next time, guys, peace out.